Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So I was doing a live stream in here a few days ago, and I was shocked to see in the comments that many of you guys are letting me know that Steve-O from MTV and Jackass fame apparently is no longer vegan. I mean, I was surprised to hear this because I know about his past history of vegan activism and getting arrested, spending 30 days in LA jail for his protest against SeaWorld. So upon hearing this, it left me quite confused. I was wondering if this information is true. Is he leaving vegan or is he one of these why I quit vegan people that we've been hearing so much about lately? So I wanted to get down to the truth of the matter. Well, before I could do that, there was already a ton of reaction on the internet towards Steve-O, a lot of militant vegans apparently attacking him. And he left this post here. Let's see what he said. It has a lot of info. He says, F vegans could be annoying to all the combative, annoying vegans who are choosing to attack me for not forcing veganism on my cats and for not being a strict militant vegan myself, even though he claims he hasn't had any meat other than fish for well over 10 years, please consider that you're doing more harm than good. Maybe stop working so hard to pit people who are on your team against you. On one hand, I can relate to what Steve O's saying there about getting attacked by these militant, mean, judgmental people online, but I hope he's not trying to imply that's how vegans are in general. We're not all mean, judgmental people. You know, we get attacked by vegans online as well, too, and we get attacked by meat eaters, too. So, you know, being an a-hole has nothing to do with one's diet. So, what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is look at what Steve O's situation actually is as a non-mean, non-judgmental vegan and really see what up with them. So reading more about Steve-O's story on this Live Kindly article, it says that his veganism seemed to be first challenged when he was on an airplane flight recently and he was craving a Bloody Mary mix minus the alcohol. Remember, Steve-O is a former recovering alcoholic. Anyway, this tomato drink, which was a favorite of his in the past, actually has a clam product in it. In Steve-O's mind, he justified eating clams because he felt that they were not sentient beings and therefore felt no pain. And therefore, this eating of clams didn't violate any moral or ethical principles he may have had as a vegan. And he cites some environmental benefits, some efficient source of protein, which always kind of puzzles me as, as vegans. As we all know, protein is not a problem. All plants have protein and there's some plants that are just packed with protein. And if you are truly concerned about getting tons of protein as a vegan, there's plenty of plant-based products out there. So apparently Steve-O felt very comfortable and okay with eating bivalves. Well, if you add that to the fact that he's feeding his cats fish, he felt that he's crossing no lines coming from his eating clams to eating fish. He felt like there's no extra ethical or moral implications there. And he felt also if his cats are healthy from eating fish, he should be healthy from eating fish. So in other words, Steve-O is now a pescatarian. He's no longer vegan. He has animal products, those animals which come from the waters of the world in his diet. So anyway, he gave those reasons about how it's healthy for him and no lines are being crossed now by eating fish. Well, let's take a look at these reasons he gave because they really don't add up. It's such a myth that fish are healthy. How can anything be healthy that has 70% of all the chemicals developed since the Industrial Revolution? These are found in fish. That's 85,000 chemicals. And salmon, a favorite of many former recent vegans, is possibly the biggest source of dietary pollutants. And from an environmental perspective, commercial fishing is doing just as much as animal agriculture to hasten the demise of our planet. For instance, three-fourths of the world's fisheries are exploited or depleted, and we could see fishless oceans by 2048. And from a moral and ethical perspective, is Steve-O unaware that 63 billion pounds of fish, that's about 40% of the fish caught each year, is what's known as bycatch, unattended marine species that get caught in fish nets and just needlessly killed, thrown back into the ocean. Remember, Steve-O was protesting against SeaWorld about the rights of marine mammals. Well, is Steve-O unaware that scientists estimate as many as 650,000 whales, dolphins, and seals are killed every year by fishing vessels? And I feel like it's my duty to point out that unlike perhaps clams and bivalves, I'm not going to enter in that whole debate, but fish are definitely sentient beings. So if Steve-O feels like no lines are being crossed by eating fish, yeah, you are taking the life needlessly of a sentient being. But what really, I think, annoyed me most about his his um, reasons for not wanting to be vegan was his attack on the movie What the Health, and particularly on Dr. Neil Bernard. 
So Steve-O takes specific issue with the claim in the movie made by Dr. Bernard and others that it's not sugar that causes diabetes. It's animal products, in particular, high fat diets. And Steve-O says, to me, it not only sounds patently false, but it's reckless and irresponsible to say that. Well, there's tons of science that back that up, as I'll show you in a second, bro. I'm thinking that doesn't sound right, particularly because I'm personally in trouble with sugar. Well, what does that mean, personally in trouble with sugar? Do you have diabetes? Was it caused by eating too much sugar or fruit or something like that? Well, he said he did his own research, and his research consisted of going to, it looks like YouTube. He says, and what do I find but video after video of people saying, I myself am a vegan, and what the hell is a bunch of crap? So you found a few videos by some outlier vegans. I know who you're probably talking about. I'm not going to mention their channel names but it's convenient you didn't find one of my four or five videos about what the hell that showed the science actually backs up what the claims of the movie are saying now here's where steve-o really goes off into the deep end of anti-vegan rhetoric he says compassion for animals isn't a license for fake science and directly blatantly lying to people just because you like animals well no, as far as I know, none of these doctors featured in the movie are vegan activists. They're advocating for veganism from a health standpoint, so you totally have that backwards. And here's where he just smears Dr. Bernard and just completely lies about him. He says, Dr. Bernard misleads his supporters since he's a board-certified psychiatrist. Wrong, Steve-O. Not an internist or disease specialist. So Steve-O concludes, So my trust is gone now. I've been lied to. The vegan community is spreading lies. I can't trust Dr. Bernard anymore. Instead of making lies up about Dr. Bernard, a quick Google search would have showed Steve-O that he's not a psychiatrist. He's a physician, a clinical researcher, an author, and adjunct associate professor of medicine. He has decades worth of diabetes research, and it's been published in some of the most prestigious medical and scientific journals out there. In case Steve-O ends up watching this video for some strange reason, I want to show you, Steve-O, how it's a known scientific medical fact that diabetes is caused by high-fat diets. I'll put the whole link to nutritionfacts.org's video in the show notes, but here's a little clip. What's called intramyocellular lipid, fat inside our muscle cells. Fat in the bloodstream can build up inside the muscle cell, creating toxic fatty breakdown products and free radicals that can block the signaling pathway process. So no matter how much insulin we have out in our blood, it's not able to open the glucose gates and blood sugar levels build up in the blood. This mechanism by which fat induces insulin resistance wasn't known until fancy MRI techniques were developed to see what was happening inside people's muscles as fat was infused into their bloodstream. That's how we found out that elevation of fat levels in the blood causes insulin resistance by the inhibition of glucose transport into the muscles. And this can happen within three hours. One hit of fat can start causing insulin resistance, inhibiting glucose uptake after just 160 minutes. So, Steve-O, if you are indeed watching, first of all, I feel you owe Dr. Neil Bernard an apology, since you were completely wrong about your assertion that he's lying and making stuff up, when in fact you're projecting. That's exactly what you were doing. You have no science to back up what you're saying, other than you found some oddball YouTubers who disagreed with what the health. And if you thought it was wrong for militant vegans to come to your social media and violently attack you and lie about you and just say mean things about you, well, better check yourself because that's pretty much what you did to Dr. Neil Bernard here. And nothing personal. If this is what you want to do diet-wise, I'm not going to try to stop you. It's your life. It's your choice. But don't try to say it's some kind of moral, ethical lifestyle on par with veganism because it's not, as I showed in what's really wrong about eating seafood. It has all the same problems that's involved with animal agriculture. Just letting you know, Steve-O. So when I leave your questions and comments down below, how did you react when you heard that Steve-O was no longer vegan? Are you fine with him being a pescatarian? So let, let us know your thoughts down below. And until next time, guys, remember, it doesn't suck being vegan.
Spin.